Hi there, and welcome to my workshop. Here I'm going to be illustrating some notes on communication which may be of value to people coming from non-Native American communities who wish to meet and possibly conduct business with the people from these communities, and more specifically, uh, those raised in the traditions of the Lakota. Uh, so we're basically talking ranching at this juncture in time. Um, for example, uh, say a rancher who is unaccustomed to native culture has an emergency need for grazing land due to some unforeseen circumstance and are told that there may be space uh, to lease on a Lakota reservation. Uh, this sort of relationship can and does exist between native and non-native cultures. And this is the correct pronunciation of the word, Lakota, and it basically means an alliance of friends. A very large percentage of Lakota people grow up speaking their native language first, and you will most likely hear some terms and phrases which you don't understand while meeting with someone from this ethnic background. Not to worry. Okay, your host will be happy to explain the meaning of whatever has been said if you don't understand. They are also likely to be fluent in at least spoken English. Um, this is in 1862, and many Native Americans are not only accustomed to American English, but have been educated in American schools and universities. So let's talk about that word, Lakota. This word also refers to a dialect of the native language spoken by these people. It's not the exact word for that. Uh, that word is Lakotiapi, but Lakota will suffice for our purposes. Lakota, Dakota, Nakota. Uh, the dialects spoken by these tribes and their sub-affiliations all vary in slight degree by the use of these three initial consonants, L, D, and N. Um, your host won't be mad at you if you pronounce anything in their native language incorrectly. In my experience, uh, if they have a problem with your pronunciation, they will simply correct you. But to know this word and at the same time try to develop a broader understanding of what we are saying when we use it will affect your relationship in a positive way. Uh, just like if you went to France and knew how to say France, like a native speaker of French or Francais. Um, and this actually brings me to the core of what this presentation is about, and that is communication itself. Uh, communication can be summed up by the act of producing and interpreting shared messages. It's a fairly simple concept. Uh, but when you add cultural differences, the hurdles begin to arise. Now, this is true for communication between any two cultures, but what makes our communication with the Lakota unique is that many of us live very near to one another on the very same soil. And not only that, but we have a history of bitter wars and deals gone bad that literally seems to end up right here in our very own backyards. Uh, we're not like Canada with its Métis Federation, which has developed into a kind of third culture blend of European and Native American traditions. But that's another subject of its own. Uh, different people, different deals. Now, many of us do, in fact, have intercultural experience with Native Americans. Uh, some of us are even blood-related and maybe even quite proud of it. And I note this because the fact of the matter is that the hostilities between Native and non-Native cultures here in America were not an everyday occurrence. Okay, This relationship developed over time. Uh, much trading and intermarriage had been achieved by the period that the word reservation was a commonly used term. And I do suggest before we get any deeper into this that we use the word reservation as opposed to local slang such as res when referring to the reservation. Or in fact, uh, why not just use the name of the reservation itself, uh, Pine Ridge for example. Uh, we want to be eager to please, uh, but not eager to show it or show off, you could say. Um, Imagine if you were from Alabama and you invited your in-laws from Minnesota to come and visit, and they began trying to imitate your Alabama accent with everything they said. Uh, you'd probably start to feel a little uncomfortable and need a reality check. Okay, Kids are laughing at the in-laws, mimicking them uh, right back, and that's just a situation we want to avoid here, right? So uh, that said, I think we can agree that communication, uh, which again we will define as the production and interpretation of shared messages, is not simply about uh, defining or understanding combinations of words. It's a little more complex than that and exactly where I'm going with these little illustrations. 
Uh, we communicate things without saying a single word at all. And this is an area in which Native American peoples are adept. Okay, so silence itself is a form of communication in this culture. Let me put it that way. Uh, someone raised with traditional Lakota values uh, may offer up a momentary period of silence when speaking with you. And the reason for that is not because they are confused by what has been said or angry, don't have an answer, etc., uh, for this speaker, that customary silence can be seen as a kind of offering to the divinity present in their surroundings. Um, the creative spirit is present in everything for this speaker, including your conversation, down to the animals you are discussing, whether they be cattle or bison. Um, the very grass that these animals share is a part of that circle. We drink the same water. Okay, so about this silence... Um, Many of us are already familiar with this type of silence through personal religious instruction. Uh, silent prayer or meditation, if you will, falls into this category and context. Uh, it just happens to be a part of your conversation. Um, one might say that the thoughts which occur during such lapses of dialogue are, in fact, for both parties, uh, integral to the discussion as a whole. So don't let it make you feel uncomfortable. Uh, we're not here just to conduct business. We're we're here to share our culture as well. And the better we are at that, uh, the better the business. Okay. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute, but there are a, a few similar notes on native culture in general I'd like to present here so that your experience will in fact be a positive one. Okay. So let's talk about eye contact for a second. Uh, while in some cultures, direct eye contact may indicate truthfulness or attentiveness, assertiveness, this is not a given for all cultures. Uh, to quote an expert on the topic, uh, in communication between Native Americans, it is inappropriate to gaze directly at someone the whole time that they are speaking. Uh, as well, it is inappropriate for a speaker to gaze directly at his or her listeners all the time. So an unwavering direct gaze is going to be unsettling, intimidating, and it's going to be interpreted as uh, being overly familiar. And this is not to say that direct eye contact never occurs. It does, of course. Uh, but, uh, but the general rule is don't press people with your eyes or your voice or your body language. Uh, natives also tend to speak a little slower than we might be used to. Uh, my pace right now is accustomed to a listener who is probably responsive to this sort of dialogue. Uh, you have to remember that English may very well be a second language for our Native friends. Um, in the case that it is not, uh, that social norm still exists. Uh, what is more we are dealing with a culture that has been deeply and inherently traumatized by the dominant culture in America. So in order for us to not keep spiraling into the same brand of confusion, uh, we must approach that trauma from a very human standpoint, okay? Uh, grief and mourning are universal experiences, and when we're aware of that presence in the lives of our own community members, our conversations typically take on a, a tone which is observant, which is humble in the media presence of such stress. Uh, in a more current sense of history, uh, we must also consider that the indigenous population contains a higher than average ratio of combat veterans. You may be doing business with one of these individuals or simply be meeting some uh, during the course of your endeavors. Thus, doctors are specially trained to be what we call culturally competent in their service to native communities. Uh, the Lakota are no exception. Um, that said, uh, let's take a look at what some regional experts endorsed by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs have said in this regard, okay? Uh, the information they presented is inclusive to all Native Americans and of great value to anyone who happens to live or work within close proximity of centralized Native communities. But back again to nonverbal communication, I'd like to note some other details which may prove important to your discussion. Most communication uh, between anyone at all, in fact, is nonverbal. So it helps to be prepared in this way for getting any conversation off to a good start. Uh, on the topic of personal space, we're going to find a variety of comfort levels regarding interpersonal proximity or how near or far one may be from another during a discussion. We're talking handshakes, hugs, etc. Okay. Uh, body language is key to many of our discussions. So as a rule of thumb, it's just best to simply relax and maintain an even keel with regard to any energetic gesturing or other physical displays. Uh, just sit wherever you're invited to sit and relax. Uh, 
Dress styles in these communities, and especially in rural communities, are most often casual. Uh, overdressing for a social function will only draw questions. So if you're not in the powwow, just stick with your jeans and your plaids. Now, if you wear a nice shirt with a native design that is a common article of clothing for you, uh, this is not over-assertion. This is just fine. Uh, many of you out there have probably seen Native Americans competing in rodeos, uh, dressed very similar to ranchers and farmers, so this shouldn't be too difficult to get past. Uh, kind of like the tea. So when, when we talk about nonverbal communication, we're speaking of behaviors uh, that are most often related to the values which are instilled and shared by the entire community, or as academics might say, core orienting perceptions. Let's talk about some of those values and perceptions. In uh, native communities, there is a traditionally high level of respect for older people and the elderly. The young are taught not to interrupt or to even talk at all unless asked during adult discussions. They are, however, invited to sit in and listen from a very young age. So if you bring your son or daughter, grandchild, uh, it's good to be mindful of this. If you become upset with your child or anyone else uh, present, it's important not to dish out any reprimands in public. We have to remember that not very long ago, these people were living very close to the land and uh, split decision making was absolutely crucial to their survival. We've all been there at some point in history and it's not uncommon to find the same sort of playbook used in our rural communities. Uh, even if Hollywood tends to focus on youth and youthful passions, okay? Uh, older people in Native communities are also expected to contain themselves when speaking, not to overstate their knowledge or get caught up in expressing strong emotions or any kind of boastful speech, but rather allow actions to speak for their knowledge. And that's where the respect comes from uh, with time. Uh, try not to be in a hurry. And if you are, Try to postpone the meeting until your schedule is free, uh, is my advice. Allow time to meet others who may or may not be part of your potential business transaction. A lot of family and extended family in rural communities, as, as many of us know. Uh, so set aside at least the day. Uh, in a Native community, today is the general focus, the here and now, uh, not an unforeseeable future. There's always an exception to a rule, of course, as in any society, but this is pretty much the norm. Um, the easiest concept of all uh, for us to remember is perhaps the Native American's relationship with the land. Uh, whereas Western society is often geared towards subduing, taming the land, uh, Natives tend to see it as a harmonious exchange. It's probably the single most important thing you can consider when attempting to dialogue with your Lakota neighbors. Uh, I cannot overstate it. So now that we've brought these basic values or orienting perceptions to the forefront of our own view across the cultural border or fence, as it were, uh, our very way to approach that border has been improved. And this by simply being aware of another person's core perceptions. So let's take a look at a few more. Uh, dominant society in America tends to be fairly critical. Uh, this is not to say that criticism never occurs in a native community, but it isn't the norm, uh, and it occurs far less often in a social setting there. So if we go to the reservation gossiping about this person or that group of people, uh, we're not going to be seen as representatives of our culture, but basically a bunch of pessimists, uh, and it's not a good way to introduce ourselves in any business setting. You know, uh, what are we going to say about our new friends when we go back to our own communities, they might be wondering. So humility and respect for one's community is indeed at the top of the list of values for indigenous peoples. Uh, this is not a me first society, as is often the case in Western oriented cultures. And speaking again of orientation, while uh, dominant society in America tends to be fixated on a house and job, uh, for the Native American, familiarity with the land comes first. For many rural Americans, uh, regardless of ethnicity, uh, these values are not going to be hard to identify with. Uh, ranchers and farmers of European descent uh, do in fact live on or near reservations. Uh, this is historic in American culture in general, and though relations are not always perfect, they do exist on some level of harmony, and this is why. It's because they're seeing things from a similar point of view. Now, in urban America, we tend to have a rule for every little possible scenario that arises. Um, etiquette, courtrooms, uh, 
In both native and rural communities, these things exist, uh, but things are a bit more flexible, I'll put it that way. Uh, they live closer to the land. Uh, they live in, with nature. So, you know, don't be surprised if you hear an occasional joke or critique about someone or some institution while visiting. Uh, humor is exceedingly valuable in this context, and the Lakota have their own special blend of it, to be sure. Uh, these are just the general rules of conduct for getting through everyday life in this particular environment. So don't be a braggart. Uh, don't run your mouth too much or fling your arms around when you're talking. Don't be a nitpicker, as we say. Uh, you may even have similar beefs, um, but as a rule, uh, just try to be mindful, try to be observant and somewhat reserved with your reactions. Uh, if you think life on the ranch is slow at times, wait until you get here. Uh, many people don't even have vehicles, uh, let alone livestock or land upon which to graze it. If you're able to develop a lasting rapport with your host, uh, your manner of communicating with one another will relax a bit. Don't bring alcohol to a place like Pine Ridge, okay? Uh, alcohol does not sit well with the genetics of many Native Americans. Uh, it has created all manner of turmoil and chaos within these communities, not to even mention our own. And at the time of this publication, alcohol consumption is either restricted or full-on illegal in many of these communities, okay? Uh, gifts are not only acceptable but encouraged, and especially when meeting with an elder, but... You can make a lot of trouble for people with uh, what to you may simply be a friendly offering. So no booze, okay? Not a flexible rule. And that brings us to the point of our little sit down here. And that is the conversation itself. Uh, we'll consider at least the first meeting to be a formal event, regardless of whether it takes place in an office, a standard house with four walls and a roof, in a yurt or around a campfire. Uh, we're still talking business, and, and that makes it a formal occasion. So let's talk about what that conversation might actually look and sound like, okay? Um, we all have different styles of communication, even within our own cultures and communities. Uh, our individual family members have different ways to communicate, and we adapt to this quite easily. Uh, however, between ethnic cultures, there is often more or less of a barrier or a gap to consider. But we're going to try and turn that barrier or gap, as it were, into a bridge with both our understanding and our ability to adapt to the new turf. Uh, so when do we speak? When do we be silent? I'm going to try and give you a better idea by slowing it down a bit myself here. So it's important to get down to business. But like I say... Uh, you should try and free up a day or so for this adventure. Uh, if you have time, uh, there may even be a beautiful campground nearby, and you can turn this into a, a miniature holiday for you and your family. Um, it's important in any case, uh, in a meeting like this, that familiar relations be established to some degree. But in this community, uh, it's appropriate to speak at length or confide in someone only after you've known them for a while. So in that sense, you'll, you'll be keeping on track with your business venture as well. Uh, this is also true with regard to direct questions, which require an immediate response. Uh, this get down to business sort of approach we often tend to take on our side of the fence, similar to the way in which I was just speaking. Uh, this doesn't fly there. Uh, it forces the respondent to answer in a sort of framed manner, and it will cause tension. Uh, there is time for a direct approach, but this isn't it, okay? Uh, especially during an introduction. Uh, you need to establish a relationship before that's acceptable. Uh, let people finish speaking, uh, even if you're having a good time and feeling passionate about what you need to express. Uh, your time will come, along with everyone else's. Uh, and that said, uh, try not to speak for other people. And this includes children. Wait your turn. Give everyone present theirs. Uh, just slow it down a bit, uh, kind of like I'm doing right now, uh, running into overtime here in my presentation, and try to really absorb what is being communicated between your host and yourself, especially when in the company of elders, okay? Uh, try to be a good interpreter of those messages. And that way, 
uh, the closer your interpretation will be to that of the speaker and vice versa. Okay, good business practice anywhere. Uh, try to speak your mind when you've fully developed your thoughts. Not only does this show that you're on the same page with your host, but you won't appear flighty or reactionary, eager to impress. Okay, a pause can actually add significance to the dialogue and stress uh, the importance of what is being said. Uh, like as if we were reading a poem. Um, if someone is speaking and you absolutely need to express a connection, a simple nod or mm, will accomplish this. This is appropriate. The Lakota have a reputation for being highly observant. Uh, no one is ignoring you. You can count on that. Okay. Uh, now, if someone there gets hot about something that comes up in the conversation, uh, this is a very good time to be silent. Uh, let them regain their composure. Let them speak with people they know and, and have perhaps known for all of their lives. Uh, just as it would be uh, if a total stranger tried to intervene when a beloved family member in your home was having an emotional meltdown. It happens to all of us, and, and, and it's, it's embarrassing for ourselves and, and, and our our people. And, and, and what's even worse is when a stranger tries to intervene, you, you know, even if the intentions are good. So, you know, anyway, uh, so once we get past our, our preconceptions of another culture, uh, the stereotypes, the misunderstandings uh, begin to dissolve. We begin to see things from their point of view, and this is a good thing. Okay, uh, it is our goal, in fact, as communicators. We're just trying to get on the same page, and it's going to take some time to do that. Uh, American uh, European relations with indigenous peoples of this continent have been severely fractured, and uh, just like when you sprain or break a bone, you take special care of it, you protect it, you leave the brace on until your wound is healed. In concluding, uh, I just want to say that I've uh, I've done my best to reiterate and additionally expand on my initial key points uh, during the latter part of this presentation, and more specifically where I begin to emphasize the importance of uh, tone and pace in your discussion, because this, uh, my friend, is the winning ticket. Um, please feel free to review my notes at your own pace. Thank you for listening, and good luck to you.